Welcome back. So in this section, we will talk about the diameter routing agent, uh, which is an optional 3GPP network element. Uh, but now we have been seeing a lot of the telco operators actually deploying a DRA with the emergence of LTE roaming. So a diameter routing agent is a functional element in 3G or 4G, uh, such as LTE network that provides real time routing capabilities to ensure that messages are routed among the correct elements in a network. The DRA was introduced by the 3GPP to address the increased diameter signaling traffic and the growing complexity of the 4G networks. So the reason we need this is uh, because you can, you can have a lot more diameter interfaces in your network depending on how many MMEs you have, how many HSS you have. Um, and then and there are other network elements that use diameter such as PCRF. Uh, and depending on how many PCRFs you have, and uh, P-Gateway, uh, all that interaction is also based on diameter. So 3GPP thought it would be best to have one entity that is able to control all the diameter interactions, and that's why they proposed the DRA. So now let's go through some of the superpowers of DRA. Uh, the first superpower is, or the... Uh, uh, the, the responsibility of the DRA is centralized control of all diameter traffic, including load balancing. So let me give you an example here. So in a typical LTE network, you have multiple MMEs uh, and each E node B is connecting to all or some of those MMEs. In the back end, you have multiple HSS. You know, in this case, we are showing six. So there are six HS HSS and there are two MMEs. Now, if you wanted to not have a DRA, you would have had to create a link from one MME to every HSS. So there would be six links from each MME. And then since there are two, right, you would have to have six plus six, 12 links. Now, what you could do is you could introduce a diameter routing agent here and you can have your MME, both MMEs talk to this diameter routing agent and you can have all your HSS also talking to the same DRA. And then let the DRA handle all the routing. So this is sort of the relay. Um, so in a typical, there are several and then without the DRA, all interactions would become very messy and difficult to handle. It's not scalable, right? As you add more HSS, you don't want to create individual links. Uh, you would rather have a centralized element that would handle all that thing for you. And the DRA is a, is a great place to terminate all the incoming connections. And then you can use it for a distribution, uh, like load balancing as an example. As soon as the request hits the MME, it hits the diameter. Now the diameter can have a round robin load balancing logic where it would uh, distribute load across these different HSS yeah, in a very scalable manner. So that is one advantage of using a DRA. So it is makes the network a lot more scalable uh, and a lot easy to manage and troubleshoot. The other uh, uh, capability of a DRA is it is it's, it, it has the capability to do something which is called AVP manipulation. So all the diameter traffic and the diameter protocol relies on what are called AVPs, attribute value pairs. And if you have say two network elements, any one and any two, and any one has the capability of sending these AVPs, whereas network element number two requires the following AVPs. So for example, auth application ID um, is zero in this case, but there is no corresponding auth application ID here. The user ID uh, here is, is something, whereas here it is called subscription ID data, even though the value is the same in both cases. Uh, similarly for this uh, charging characteristics. Now, if you, integrate these with a direct link, these two network elements will not work because they don't know how to talk the common language. Their, their underlying AVP structure is different. So now what you can do is you can introduce a DRA 
and this DRA can do AVP manipulation. It can take this user ID and it can map it to this subscription ID data and send it out to this network element so that this element understands what the underlying AVP is. And it can do this in the opposite direction where uh, it takes this and kind of makes it to be user ID. So it is a translation mechanism between both. And this helps interoperability uh, between different vendors. So this is uh, one other advantage of using a DRA. So as I've listed here, in a typical LTE network, there are several diameter nodes that belong to different network vendors. And during integration, you are bound to see issues related to IoT where certain nodes expect messages in a given format with the DRA AVB manipulation, you can overcome such issues by using a translation mechanism in between. So this is the third uh, use for a DRA where you can do intelligent routing for LT roaming and topology hiding. So imagine you have uh, three networks here. You have the local MNO here, uh, MNO number two, and then this is an international MNO somewhere outside, you know, your home country, as an example. Now, like now, if you didn't have the DRA, what you would have had to do is you would have had to first interconnect your MME to the HSS here and here, and then once you do that, this each of these net network operators knows what your topology is. So it knows, okay, oh, this is your MME IP address. Okay, behind this MME IP address, you have this HSS. Uh, and uh, there, there, there is a lot more uh, detail that each of these MNOs would need to share among each other. And it makes uh, the management of the network a lot more difficult. And it's also not very secure. Whereas if you had a DRA, you would talk to just DRAs, would talk among themselves, they don't need to disclose what is happening inside behind the DRA. So that is where the topology hiding comes in. And so that is one use case. Now for intelligent routing for LT roaming. So now if you remember, I had mentioned there are two important aspects in a diameter connection. There is a host name and then there is a realm name. So the realm, is actually constructed using the MCC and MNC, which is part of the PLMN. So now you, what you can do is you can do realm based routing. So you can say, oh, I have a, a subscriber that belongs to this operator that is within my coverage area. And I can look at the MCC MNC. I can construct the realm on the fly and I can build a route for that realm to this DRA and I can send it here. Whereas, oh, now I, if this network operator has a different realm, I can build a route uh, that is a realm based and I can send the traffic here. So you can do realm based routing um, using DRA. That is another key advantage of DRAs. Okay, so uh, just to summarize, a DRA has three main use cases. We have the we have the uh, the intelligent routing for LT roaming uh, topology hiding. We have AVP manipulation, right? And then we can make the network a lot more scalable by introducing load balancing um, in the network. Okay, so with all the background information regarding DRA connectivity, how does this really help us? You know, you may be wondering this thing. So let's try to explain that. So once the UE, initial UE message reaches the MME, it looks at the MZ or the GUTI and determines if this is a home subscriber or a roamer. This is done based on the PLMN, MCC MNC, which is part of the MZ, right? Once it knows the kind of subscriber it needs to reach out, to the HSS. It can do this in two ways. It can either talk to the HSS directly or it can go with the DRA. Now, 
depending on if it is a home subscriber you would go talk to your home hss hss if it's a roaming subscriber you would need to talk to the roaming partners hss hss right and each of those can happen in two ways you can either talk directly or you can go with the dra so now with the dra background you can debug issues if there is a dra in the network for roaming scenarios dra is a requirement right so hopefully all that dra background uh, helps you in uh, troubleshooting uh, 